In this presentation, we will explore the effect of drugs in the human body. An understanding of how drugs act in the human body is vital if health professionals are to use drugs more effectively and safely. The study of what a drug does to the body is called pharmacodynamics, and it can be a difficult concept to grasp because it requires an understanding of anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, and bioscience. This visualization has been designed to help you understand one important area of pharmacodynamics, and that is how drugs bind to receptor sites to bring about a pharmacological response. Specifically, we will be looking at how drugs known as beta blockers target receptors in cardiac tissue to reduce the heart rate and energy demands of a diseased heart. First of all, we need to think about how the brain communicates with the body via the nervous system. The nervous systems can be divided into two main divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is composed of the brain and spinal cord and together this system controls all functions in the body. The peripheral nervous system refers to the parts of the nervous system outside the brain and spinal cord and is subdivided into the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The ANS is further organized into three subdivisions, the parasympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system and the enteric nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, information is relayed from body to brain and brain to body like a two-way street. Sensory nervous cells carry information from the periphery to the brain and spinal cord in the central nervous system via afferent pathways, alerting the central nervous system to internal or external changes such as alterations in blood pressure and heart rate. In comparison, motor nervous cells carry signals away from the brain and spinal cord in the central nervous system via efferent pathways in order to regulate activity and produce the necessary actions that ensure effective balanced control of body functions. Homeostasis is the term we give this balancing act that takes place in the body. We often take for granted how we are able to carry out all our daily activities and it is the high level of functioning of nerve cells and tissues in the nervous system that make this happen. The nervous system innervates various organs and tissues throughout the body. Now let's look more closely at how the nervous system sends and receives messages about body function in order to maintain homeostasis. Imagine that we have a microscope and we are looking at how the nervous system operates at the cellular level. What we see is specialized nerve cells called neurons that are responsible for transmitting information throughout the nervous system. If we look at the structure of the neuron, there is a cell body, an axon or tail-like structure that carries impulses away from the cell body and terminates at the branch-like projections known as dendrites. We could describe the central nervous system as a complex series of wired connections between neurons. Information from one neuron flows to another neuron across a small gap referred to as a synapse, so that the impulse can continue on its journey and terminate within the target organ. There are both electrical and chemical synapses in the nervous system. In electrical synapses, ions carry the current through small openings in the cell membrane called gap junctions. Gap junctions are commonly involved in the transmission of electrical impulses that lead to cardiac contractions. However, chemical impulses cannot cross this gap, and so neurotransmitters act as chemical messengers to ensure communication between neurons. Neurotransmitters are released from a bubble-like structure called a vesicle, and these chemical messengers are then available to bind with receptors in the membrane of the neuron on the other side, or with receptors in the target organ, such as the heart. 
This neurotransmitter receptor binding relationship is important in maintaining homeostasis in the body. It is possible to gain a greater understanding of this area of pharmacodynamics by exploring how neurotransmitters in the autonomic nervous system control resting heart rate and show how drugs, such as beta blockers, interrupt the neurotransmitter receptor binding relationship in order to reduce heart rate. There are many neurotransmitters in the ANS, but the most well-known are acetylcholine and noradrenaline. There are also multiple receptors and receptor subtypes that can bind a single neurotransmitter. For example, beta-adrenergic receptors are found in the sympathetic nervous system, and muscarinic receptors are found in the parasympathetic nervous system. So the question is, how does the autonomic nervous system control a resting heart rate? The opposing influences of the ANS are at play to balance the effects of the neurotransmitters acetylcholine and noradrenaline on heart function. The arrival of the electrical impulse at the nerve terminal causes the vesicle to attach itself to the membrane and release acetylcholine, which crosses the synapse and combines with receptors on cells in the heart. These receptors are muscarinic M2 receptors. In the parasympathetic conduction pathway, acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter released from the synaptic vesicle. Vagal nerve fibers of the parasympathetic branch of the ANS are found primarily in the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular nodes and atrial muscle. Acetylcholine has its effect on muscarinic receptors in the SA node to decrease heart rate and on the AV node to reduce the speed at which electrical activity spreads through the heart to bring about a contraction of the ventricles. This action is referred to as reduced conduction velocity. By comparison, Nerve fibers of the sympathetic nervous system, which use noradrenaline as a neurotransmitter, innervate the SA node, the atria, and ventricles. The action of noradrenaline on B1 receptors, located in both the nodes and the atrial and ventricular muscles, increases heart rate and increases the spontaneous firing of the SA node, known as automaticity. Noradrenaline also increases the speed at which electrical activity spreads through the heart to bring about a contraction of the ventricles, conduction velocity, and force of contraction. Most organs, including the heart, receive dural innervation from the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, and in many instances the systems produce opposite effects. This is the case with resting heart rate. It is how the body maintains homeostasis. The parasympathetic conduction pathway and sympathetic conduction pathway work in opposition to ensure that the heart rate is slowed to about 75 beats per minute. In the absence of any regulation from the parasympathetic nervous system, the heart would contract at about 90 to 100 beats per minute, which is the normal automatic firing rate of the SA node. Once we know how the autonomic nervous system regulates heart rate to maintain homeostasis, we can begin to see how a diseased heart might trigger pathological autonomic responses. Several centers in the central nervous system integrate all autonomic nervous system activities, but we are focusing specifically on the medulla oblongata because it contains several vital centers necessary for survival, such as the respiratory and vasomotor center, and it is the cardiac center that has a role in the regulation of our heart rate. Let's look at heart failure as an example of a diseased heart with altered function. In heart failure, the left ventricle cannot pump enough blood into the circulation. To compensate for poor pumping strength and output, the cardiac center sends nerve impulses to the SA node via sympathetic fibers and noradrenaline is released to increase heart rate and contractility. These compensatory mechanisms help to ease congestions and improve cardiac pumping strength. However, these mechanisms become ineffective over time and cardiac function deteriorates. 
Pharmacological management of heart failure is introduced to improve cardiac function and increase perfusion. The benefit of beta blocker therapy in patients with heart failure is related to reducing the detrimental effects of sympathetic stimulation, which includes elevated heart rate and increased myocardial energy demands. Now let's see how a beta blocker works. We can see the neurotransmitter noradrenaline being released from the vesicle in the nerve ending. Watch how the beta blocker competes with noradrenaline for receptor sites in the heart. There is a very strong interaction between beta blockers and beta 1 receptors located in both the nodes and the atrial and ventricular muscles of the heart and they displace noradrenaline from the beta 1 receptors. Blocking beta adrenoceptors in the heart decreases rate, conduction velocity, myocardial contractility and cardiac output. The effects on the patient is that they feel less breathless and less tired. Thank you for